all of a sudden I dropped out of school and within nine months had married a complete stranger, a devotee, and went to Japan. She sent, <laughs> she sent this relative that was like, he, he was like a grandfather, probably to check up on me. It's a good thing he came because we were so poor I couldn't afford a coat. He bought me a coat. And we went to Japan. We didn't speak Japanese, but Srila Prabhupada told us, that's okay. If your house is on fire, you can convey that message. It's like, okay, that makes sense. So we went, and we went out every day on Harinam, and Tokyo was a great place to do Samkirtan because there were so many people. We went to a place called the Ginza, and people would just be in these circles just watching us, you know. And, and so we had some Bhagavad, um, Back to Godhead magazines printed in Japanese, and I would go out, and I had an, a few, I don't remember how much Japanese I knew. Now, the person I married was named Sudama, and he picked up Japanese fast, and Srila Prabhupada said he'd been Japanese in a past life. And I, would ha I had a few lines memorized in Japanese, and then they'd start talking in Japanese, and I'd say, Nihongo Wakana and I, I don't speak Japanese. And they were looking at me like, we well, just spoke Japanese. And, but that's all I knew. And anyway, I knew how much the magazine cost, and I would say how much the magazine cost. And we'd sell magazines. And if we made enough Lakshmi, enough money, we could go buy some vegetables and, and offer them uh, and have something to eat. So we went day by day, and Krishna just, uh, you know, took care of us. And, and Srila Prabhupada visited twice when I was in Japan. And it was actually Janmashtami and Vyasa Puja, and I got to cook, help cook for Srila Prabhupada. And he, he had just initiated a lot of sannyasis who all came. We had this very small Japanese house that was made out of paper with, you know, straw mats. Because I was thinking, why didn't I have a fire ceremony? For my second initiation, I, and I just realized that whole place would have burned down. You know, really, it was like paper. So, but anyway, Sri Paul like personally gave it to me, so I feel like it's bona fide. And uh, <laughs> well, some people say if you don't have a fire ceremony, it's not. So he came with. He had just initiated all these sannyasis, and we were in this little place. And and back then it was very strict. You didn't really talk to the sannyasis, so I'm the only. Mataji in the temple, and I had to sleep out in the car. There was no place for me. I was trying to be like kind of in, in, inconspicuous, but so anyway, then uh, there's just so many things that happened. But you know, just just because, like the second time Srila Prabhupada came, actually it had been two and a half years, and um, it was not real easy all the time. We had moved four times. We were now in this bigger place, but it was in a rural area, and it was so cold. It was so cold that <laughs> there were a couple of weeks, anything I didn't want to freeze, I would put in the refrigerator. I'm serious, like the fruit, I would put in the refrigerator, because it was, it was so cold. You had, I wore my coat all the time. And um, I didn't really have a lot of association, because even when, Pro when Shula probably came, it was all men, and, you know, Bali Mardan and Sudama, they got the association. So I was, didn't have as much association, and seems to be my uh, path in this life. But anyway, when Srila Prabhupada came the second time, and he saw me, he was coming up the gravel road. He, he had just come from the airport, he got out of the car. And uh, he started walking up, and when he saw me, he said, Chintamani, Chintamani, thank you very much. And just by saying that, I felt immediately like, I can stay here forever. Srila Prabhupada would have that effect. You might have a problem, you might, might have something, you go in to see Srila Prabhupada, and then <laughs> you feel like, I don't even need to ask him. You know, it, he would just have that effect, being in the same room with him. But um, he had this effect that um, when he'd be talking to a group, every person would feel like he looked at me, or he answered a question I was thinking of, or he gave me a special mercy or something, you know. Everyone would have that feeling. He was very powerful. He was very... Um, you know, at the same time wise, at the same time innocent, at the same time funny, and um, he knew, you know, like, we may not know uh, when it's good to be, like, heavy with someone and when it's not good. Like, he could know which people to be heavy with, which people, like with me, he only yelled at me one time, just a little tiny bit, and I was crying. And, <laughs> and, and then he said, he said to my husband, be kind to her, she cries very easily. <laughs> and so... You know, 
<laughs> he was very, I found he was very kind to women, and uh, he would say things like uh, in class, if you cry for Krishna, you are all right. And he said, if you sweep this floor with your heart and soul, you will go back to Godhead. I would be happy because that was my service to even the floor. <laughs> you know, you'd feel like, oh, he's saying something just for me. So he had that effect on everyone, but everyone uh, felt, you know, satisfied. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things that happened. Do you have any questions about anything? I don't to say. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of pastimes, but we can't tell them all at the same time. It'll be too late. Did you like Kirtan with Prabhupada? Kirtan. Always Kirtan, yeah. There was always Kirtan. And one time <laughs> in Columbus, I was a new devotee. <clears throat> he would, after the Kirtan, and everyone's paying obeisances, one person would be saying, Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahansa, you know, and Prabhupada at that time would come out. And one time, uh, when we were paying obeisances, when Prabhupada came by me, he stopped and he bent down and went on my back, like that, on my back. And Lauren Arian, who was saying Jai Om, he was the only one that saw it. He said, did Prabhupada touch you? Did Prabhupada touch you? Do you know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so there was a lot of funny things that happened. Okay. Oh, she mentioned praying for Krishna. One of my wonderful God sisters, one of the few that's older than me by age, um, Sumati Devi Dasi, was serving in Boston. She was one of Srila Prabhupada's early book distributors. And at the time they were distributing Krishna book, they came in a little pack, um, three small blue volumes in a little case. Beautiful, attractive, um, small size. And she was sitting, she took a lunch break on the Boston Commons, but she put a cloth down and she put the books down in kind of a display in case while she was eating, somebody would notice the books and ask her, what are you doing or what are these books? Mm -hmm. So even though she was taking a lunch break, she was still thinking, how can, how can I get this message out? So some young man came by, he saw the books, and uh, she immediately stopped to engage him in, you know, this, what, what are the books? And she was showing him the pictures, telling him a couple pastimes, and he said, you know, I do a radio show on campus. This would be fantastic. Would you would you be willing to come and tell some of these stories on the, on live on the air? You know, can you imagine saying no to that? <laughs> <laughs> and he got totally into it, so that they, that herself and um, another devotee, Zapsharup Adhikari at the time, were making up the scripts, and this young man was making up sound effects. It was like they were really, this was like became a weekly event. And one day, Satru Maharaj had recorded one of these, and he went to New York to play for Srila Prabhupada. And in the um, pastime, which was Krishna and um, Mother Yasoda pastime, when Krishna was, what well, was, the, I think the Kuya Serpent, but when Krishna was on Kuya Serpent, Mother Yasoda was petrified. To, at one point she almost lost consciousness, but otherwise she was calling, Krishna, 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 she was calling out. So Sumati was calling, crying out, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And Prabhupada heard that and he stops, he goes, who is that crying for Krishna? He said, well, that is Sumati. He said, you tell her she must always chant like that. <laughs> so even though Sumati didn't have personal contact, one could say with Srila Prabhupada, she got that instruction that she holds as dear as her life to her heart to this day, calling out for Krishna. <laughs> Crying for Krishna. <laughs> Said something about magician. Oh, <laughs> yeah. His son is a practicing magician. <laughs> so, if you haven't seen his little preaching trick with the cards, highly recommend it. But <laughs> one time, um, on two occasions actually, there was someone who was like an illusion artist, you know, a magician. So, in India, this person came and 
prophets, the devotees of Prabhupada, you know, somebody wants to, he's a magician, he wants to, okay, let him come. So the guy um, did his thing. And um, so Prabhupada, you know, he, he looked at him. He, he, had, he had somehow managed to get, to, like he was an illusion artist, to take off Prabhupada's, you know, appear to get Prabhupada's watch, you know. So Prabhupada, um, he wasn't so impressed. He said, actually, um, Krishna was a greater magician than, <laughs> than any of us could ever imagine. And I said, but I'm also a magician. He said, you see all of these devotees? <laughs> you know, they used to just, you know, be boys and girls loitering on the street. He you know, said, and now they're pure devotees of Krishna. The Prabhupada defined pure devotee of Krishna as one who is sincerely serving the orders of the spiritual master. This is a pure devotee. And of course, we came to later, under, you know, to understand um, there's different levels of pure devotee, just like, you know, we have the college preaching going on with Deva Madhav and his group. So everybody you meet more or less is a student. But there are some freshmen, there's some sophomore, junior, senior, maybe there's postgraduate, PhD, different levels of student. But the general umbrella is there, they're a student, you know. So in the same way, when you begin to serve in sincere, earnest, the instructions of the guru, you become a pure devotee. But then you have to keep advancing. There was... Um, There was another one too that, oh, actually the one who stole took the watch off. So he took the watch and then, um, this person managed to get the watch and then Prabhupada said, all right, but don't do that again. <laughs> he took his watch, you know. But that devotee actually, he surrendered, the, he wasn't a devotee at the time, just he was smart, smart, you know, we'd say, uh, I don't want to say we'd say in America, smart something or other. Anyway, <laughs> we sit on it. <laughs> you know, it's smart. You know, so he um, but he actually, you know, and to this day he's serving through the Prabhupada. Um, he became very well known as a filmmaker, and he's done so much wonderful service for the Prabhupada. But he began by just showing Prabhupada he could steal his watch without getting caught. <laughs> But actually, Krishna taught him. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada taught his heart. <laughs> yeah. And about fainting also. Oh, yes. We were talking earlier, and I said, oh, yeah, remind me, I'll tell you. So, you know, you see this Krishna art. You see over there, actually, it was a beautiful wall over there with the many beautiful Krishna arts. Some of them are really, you know, classic um, pictures. Um, but in the beginning, as Shantanya was pointing out, we actually didn't have pictures of Krishna in the beginning. So we were just, we knew that he was blue. We knew he had a peacock feather. We knew he played a flute. Well, in the 60s, every hippie played a flute. So, I mean, it was like a, something hippies did. They played flutes. So we thought that Krishna must be kind of cool. But, um, you know, I mean, that was the naivety of the beginning. But then, um, Prabhupada was describing Krishna with his arm around a calf. This is the one your picture you're talking about. And standing with Radharani, we asked, who is Radharani? You know, he'd had us put a sign, Radha Krishna Temple, who's Radharani? That's Krishna. He looked at us, you know, kids off the street. He says, Radharani is Krishna's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Something we could understand at the moment. But he had us, he told us about this poster company in India. So Shamsundra Mukunda wrote to them. So this the same one, you know, Bridge Bossy Prince, yeah. And they had some posters, you know, so we, they sent, you know, some money over, not in an envelope, I think they did a bank draft. But we got our first pictures of Krishna. And there was Radha and Krishna. The, one of them is there, the one where you see Radha and Krishna. With, Krishna's, you know, kind of cheddar holding up around Radharani, and then the classic one with Krishna with his arm around 
the little calf that does almost appear like a deer. And uh, Mother Minnesota with the stick, you know, like, oh, gosh, what is this? What's going on? This is lady chasing him with a stick. <laughs> um, you know, the, all of these pictures were just, like, really charming to us. And um, it was our first exposure to actually seeing, you know, a picture of Krishna. So that now the chanting took on another dimension because we actually had some kind of, you know, visual image. But then Srila Prabhupada started asking devotees who could paint to paint. And he was personally instructing them. And he was specifically giving them instructions for future books. So that the, he, he understood that if you just get a book with philosophy in it, not so many people, particularly in America, would find that attraction to sit down and just read a book with philosophical information. But if you have the pictures, the illustrations, it brings it to life. So he had that, you know, he got that right away. And he was direct, personally directing the pictures. How the form should be, how the hand should be placed, how long the hair should be, what they should be wearing. Every, the details were there, coming from Srila Prabhupada. And these devotees were just faithfully replicating his instructions. But because it was a beginning effort, some of the paintings you might say were simple. There weren't great details, but the point was there, like Putana, big, huge demon with the little baby Krishna on her breast, and she was like, ah, you know, falling on her side, and she had a pink sari in the first picture. You know, you got the picture. But after a few years, as the artists had been painting and painting, their techniques and their and with their experience, or you know, the quality of their art, you might say, from a materialistic point of view, had had improved. You know, so then the persons who were managing the BBT and the artists thought we should replace some of these pictures with some of these newer pictures. And they were going to reprint the Krishna book because it was, you know, it was like a bestseller needed more. So Rameshwar Prabhu, who was in charge of the BBT at the time, took these newer proposed pictures to Srila Prabhupada and um, told them that, you know, we're considering, the artists are considering that now they've, you know, their, their talent has improved, increased, you know, the pictures are technically better and, you know, would like to replace some of the pictures. Um, Oh, was a replace picture? You know, what are you talking about? He said, well, you know, we'd like some of the ones we feel that they're, you know, we could put in some different pictures, and here's some other ones we could, you know, they're, they're improved, you know, improved, they're the same picture, but an improved quality. He goes, I have approved of these pictures. You know, he was like stunned by what was being proposed. And, um, We'd always heard it said that these pictures were windows to the spiritual world. Mm. So at this point with this conversation, it, it became a very intense. And he, he agreed to look at the pictures, but he, re he rejected each one. And one there was, it was like a Rasa dance picture. And the, the first Rasa dance picture had been personally directed by Srila Prabhupada to Devahuti Devi Dasi, who was an artist. And she was older than most of us. She was a more mature woman. In fact, her daughter also joined. Her daughter was a young woman. And it was a beautiful picture. And the picture was actually hanging on the wall in Prabhupada's quarters where this conversation was taking place. And he, he looked at the proposed picture. He goes, hippie dance, simply hippie. The gopi's heads aren't covered. Krishna's hair is flying all over the place. Hippie, simply hippie dance. And he was looking at this beautiful chaste picture of the Rasa dance that was done by Devahuti under his, you know, under personal direction. So one by, and then had some pictures of the six Goswamis, but only four of them were in the picture. Um, you know, he was just pointing out one by one the, the, the defects in these, you know, better, so-called better pictures. But I, I was hearing the story 
and I was just realizing, you know, how we thought we could cancel or we could presuppose to judge the windows to the spiritual world. You know, we're getting a chance to look through into the spiritual world and we're like, we're looking at it from a mentally critical, materialistic point of view, like there's some defect and we can improve upon the spiritual world. So that was, you know, a very interesting consideration to when we see these beautiful illustrations, you know, not the, not the ones done by commercial artists, especially nowadays, they're very kind of vivacious. They show, you know, very um, sensuous. At one time, one of the artists, she drew this picture of Krishna and Prabhupada. It was Krishna and Lord Shaitan. Prabhupada didn't like it because it made it like so, you know, sensuous or manly looking, you know. Krishna was a small boy, he was, you know, young, innocent, you know, and you have these, now you have these, even people are doing the same thing with deities, you know, painting them in kind of sensuous ways. But we should always keep in mind the teachings of the pure devotee and reflect back on what Prabhupada actually gave us, how he gave it to us. And you look at these older, beautiful, big bossy prints by people who were not just commercial artists, but they were bridge bossy. They were bridge bossy means devotees in Vrindavan. And you see the, the beauty is there, is the simplicity of heart. And Prabhupada explained that in the spiritual world, there's no such thing as sex life. That there's women who are unlimitedly more beautiful than any beautiful woman in the material world. And there's men who are more unlimitedly handsome than any man in the material world. And they're there. And there's no agitation of sex life. Because in each and every personality in the spiritual world is complete attention to Lord Krishna. So that instead of seeing another person with regards to your own um, possible future sense enjoyment, that you're only seeing this beautiful Krishna Seva. And in this way, the, there is no material calculation of, you know, false sex life. So, Srila Prabhupada gave us Krishna consciousness in a very pure form. And we don't need to improve anything that he gave us. We need to understand it and to actually be able to imbibe it in our lifetime. And then we'll actually be seeing how these beautiful paintings will actually be seen through the window into the spiritual world. You know. And this was another one of Srila Prabhupada's great gifts to us. Yeah. Actually, there was such a power how that when he formed the BBT, I think it was in 72, and at one point they had um, just Printed. I think at that point there was only about 26 languages in print. Now we have over 100, from, even bought for Bhagavad Gita, over 100 translations. But even at that point when there was 26 different languages, at one point they, they um, had what they were doing the printing in India, and they filled, I think it was like 26 car loads, train loads of paper to you know, print all the different Gitas. It was like a very, because everybody was so committed to spreading Krishna consciousness through book distribution. And that's a wonderful fever, this fever to distribute transcendental knowledge through book distribution. And somehow or other, most of us have caught that fever in as much as we've ex at least accepted a book. So if we've accepted one of these rare books of Krishna consciousness, then we've got a little contact with that transcendental fever. But we need to fan the flames so we get a raging fever. So that we also want to go out and share this wonderful Krishna consciousness in the form of these books. You know, someday, like, you know, it's now we can have them on our electronic things. Like, oh my, I took that bus up here today from Pittsburgh. And, you know, I have one of those, what do they call it, iPads, and, you know, if all the books are there, and it's really great. And then all of a sudden you look up, the battery's going out. <laughs> you know? ah. So the wonderful thing about the original books, the battery never run, goes out, you know.
at any time. <laughs> As she was saying that Prabhupada instructed her, you may not know the language, but if your house is burning, you can, you can get the idea across. My actual experience in book distribution was in countries where I didn't speak the language. The first country that I was given to distribute books was in Belgium. And actually, I had been asked to be the driver of this Sankirtan party, which was actually a men's party, but I was like, had just arrived in the scene and I had, I had a drive, well, they thought I had a driver's license. Actually, <laughs> <I did. laughs> anyway, in those days we didn't take certain things too seriously. So I drove them from the Amsterdam temple down to Belgium and then I thought, okay, you know, I don't know what I was going to do all, what I was thinking I would do all day, but I remember the, the assistant to the head of the Sankirtan party handed me this great big bag. And I said, what's that? And he goes, this is your book bag. I said, oh, well, I don't speak the language. In, in this part of Belgium, they were speaking um, Dutch, Antwerp. He goes, oh, well, none of us do either. And I realized, oh, yeah, because they were from England or France. You know, it was kind of a mixed group. And he goes, I'll teach you the mantra. And I looked, I said, I already know the Hare Krishna mantra. <laughs> he goes, no, I mean the book distribution mantra. And he's, you know, I should believe from here, taking the book. You know, it was like, suddenly he's wrapping off and he made me repeat it till I got this, you know, here, take this book, you know. And if they argued, you'd say, talk for the Frau, which means take it for your wife, you know. It was like, somehow or other, just get him. And then he said, kind of... You know, kind of bed rock, kind of bed rock. I mean, just give a little donation, just give a little donation, you know. So, I mean, that was all. Like, she could just say a few words, we just would learn a few words. But we so intently, I mean, for me, at first it was just, I wanted to lighten the load of that book bag. <laughs> but, but then, I, you know, you, you get a little bit past that stage and you actually want to give out this very blissful transcendental knowledge. And that lightens the load of the book bag, but it also lightens the load of the heart of the of the receiver. And I have God brothers and God brothers, God sisters and God brothers, who to this day are still 40 plus years distributing Prabhupada's books with such great ecstasy. And today one of my God sisters posted on Facebook a stack of broken down carton boxes. And she said, I cleaned out my garage today. I thought I'd take a pic. Uh, she said, I don't, she's not that active. But I just thought I'd take this, not that active on Facebook. She's active otherwise. I thought I'd take a picture. <laughs> so she didn't, see, you know, all you see was a stacked carton box. And so everybody starts like making comments. And one person who's another book distributor goes, she says, those are the empty books, book boxes. <laughs> And we realized, you know, like how many boxes, you know, and she's a person with a full-time job with a handicapped child, I think, you know, it's like, um, and so many empty boxes, they're all flat and stacked up uh, mm -hmm. because she has this taste and this desire to serve and to please Srila Prabhupada and give some gift to these hungry souls because the soul is hungry. I'm very happy that Dave Amato has making that part of the Ypsilanti Center. And I hope that and as the year is you know, this year is kind of ending, but next year we might get a little of that fire into the heart of all of the devotees in this area because I'm I'm pretty sure we could really do really well here. It's a very, there's a lot of affluence on one level, but there's a burden when there's affluence. So we can offer to relieve some of that affluent burden and we can give them the real influence. <laughs> okay. Srila Prabhupada was on a morning walk he suddenly just stopped and he turned around. He said, So who start who was the first who was the first one to start book distribution? So they were all trying to think, was it Kandra, was it this one, was it that? They were like naming names. 
Prabhupada said, no. He thinks of it. It was Jayananda. So you may know Jayananda from his picture on the Rathiatra cart, because he was also known for his wonderful construction of Rathiatra carts. But he was also the first devotee to make a sizable donation to Srila Prabhupada in order to print the, his first hardbound. The Bhagavad Gita by Macmillan wasn't our publishing. This, the first BBT publishing, you could say, was the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. When Jayananda's grandmother had died, he was from Ohio. And um, he met the devotees in San Francisco. He graduated from college, and he felt like, now what? He had an engineering degree. But he didn't feel any, any joy in life. And he came to San Francisco because he heard there was something going on with all these people called hippies. And he wasn't a hippie at all. He was like what we would call a straight guy. You know, <laughs> so, but he wants something going on. He, they were looking for something, and he wanted to find it. And he was driving a taxi with his college degree, and um, because he was in such despair about what am I supposed to do now? And he went by a couple of times at the temple, and he, he he saw that no matter day or night, there was something going on there, and he'd see these people jumping up and down with their arms raised. And uh, a couple of times he went and tried to look in. And finally, you know, one of the, was one of the Giridas or Shamsundar Makunda said, Come on in. And I noticed him. Come in, come in. And he came in. And uh, he was just a person who didn't assert himself. A very humble type. And then he. He asked if he could come back again. <laughs> Very wonderful person. I remember he started coming to the Sunday feast, and he asked if he could bring something too. And he would make these cookies called, uh, I remember to this day, they were called pecan sandies. Mm -hmm. It was with butter and powdered sugar and ground up pecans. So, he... Mm, coming, and then he got initiated. His grandmother died and left him $5,000, which was more money at that, those days than it was now. He handed the check to Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada told him, no, you, you, you may need some money. And he goes, I wouldn't know what to do with it. You would know what to do with it. Please take it. And he genuinely meant it. And Prabhupada thanked him. And this money was the money that help get the teachings of Lord Chaitanya printed. So Prabhupada said, Jayananda, he was the first one to distribute big books because he was the cause behind the, cre the printing, the first publication. Just like George Harrison contributed to the first publication of Krishna book. Yeah. Therefore, George Harrison, by de facto, became one of the largest book distributors in ISKCON. <laughs> because he would just say, well, or Harrison, they'd see the name. Oh, I'll take that book. <laughs> and the I did behind the BBT formation of the BBT was to publish books and also create an economic background for the temple and to have an economic platform for future books publication. So Prabhupada gave a very simple one-two formula. The books, just by giving an example, the books cost one dollar, so you sell to the temples for two. Then, the, so the cost is one, there's a profit of one. Half of that goes into a building fund for constructing future temples, and half goes into re reproducing. The future temples that were constructed, just to give you an idea, through the BBT, which means through book distribution sales, Vrindavan and um, Juhu. Juhu was the first, then Vrindavan, and then Mayapur. So this is how Srila Prabhupada envisioned. And all the time, more and more publications were being printed. You know. So that vision is still there. And as members of Srila Prabhupada's Sankirtan mission, 
it's wonderful to be connected with it in that way. It brings us closer to Krishna, closer to Prabhupada, and closer to our own personal self-realization. It's called Krishna Consciousness in Action. Just remembering how she, when, um, we'd be doing the books and Srila Prabhupada would all, always say, are you reading the books? Yes. It wasn't just that we were selling the books. Are you reading the books? He said, I wrote these for my disciples. And if we, you can't artificially just want to go out and do books, but if you read the books and then you're feeling something from it, from it you want to share that. And he asked, what was the other thing he said? He said oh, he, he would always say, I have created your good fortune, and now you go out and create the good fortune for others. So I'm just so grateful that there's young devotees that still have the energy to do that. Thank you. Please keep it going. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's getting quite nice and late now. And tomorrow is the beginning of a 41-hour ecstatic kirtan. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs>